What's up, guys? Uh, my name is AJ. I'm Vincent. And we are proud to present Lifeline with AJ and Vincent, Quarantine Edition. <laughs> um, so we just wanted to provide you with some content while you guys stay at home. Uh, we don't have much to do, so we wanted to provide you some entertainment, um, something to listen to or watch while you guys have to stay at home. We are going to be talking to a few people. Um, all at different times and yeah we'll be talking about rona and the situation and how everything's going down and how everything hit the fan and how it's all gonna pan out everybody is in different places so uh we'll all get different perspectives from each person so yeah first we're gonna be talking to my friend tristan from temple welcome tristan this is our thank podcast you. thank you for having me uh, if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Tristan Jennings. I'm, I go to Temple University. I'm a mechanical engineering student. Um, I play volleyball. I guess that's a fun fact. I didn't know if you wanted a fun fact. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it's really great to have you. Um, but I guess the main reason, so like me and Vincent, we're from Virginia. We kind of know that standpoint, but I kind of wanted to get your standpoint. You're more north than us. You're closer to New York. You're closer to the epicenter. Um, of the virus, uh, we just wanted to ask you, like, how it's been affecting you, like, the, when you first heard of the virus, how um, it affected you and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's actually been a crazy couple of months, um, at least for me being a resident of Philadelphia. So going in, uh, I guess, chronological order, it started really, I first heard about it in January. January is when I first heard about it. Um, I didn't really think much of it. I just heard like, oh, there's, there's like the virus. I thought it was just some other type of, uh, I mean, viruses should be taken seriously, but like, I didn't think it was this on this magnitude. I definitely didn't think it was going to be like this. Um, so I thought it was just going to blow over. Then I remember around the time of, uh, of Kobe's death. I think that was on the 26th, 27th of January. Um, that was when it started to pick up and I think that's when the first cases happened in America and in, in uh, Washington or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's when we're like, all right, now we need to start like addressing this issue. And yeah, like we, we saw the cases um, here and there. We're like, all right, let's try to make plans. I'm saying we, as in like, what are we going to do as a nation, as a city, stuff like that. Um, Cause I definitely didn't know what I was doing. And then it wasn't until, I don't remember the exact date. It had to be like second or third week in February, which was when everyone, when you saw shutdowns in like New York and other places. And then being a Philly resident, we have uh, three main universities here, Temple, Drexel, and uh, UPenn. So there was a big question of, all right, we know at some point these cases are going to keep rising. So these schools need to shut down. Who's going to be the first one? So, like, it was kind of a joke in the moment to try to lighten the mood. Like, oh, like, who's going to do it first? Is it going to be Temple? Is it going to be Drexel? Is it going to be UPenn? Um, but it ended up being Temple, evidently, being the first one to, like, announce, like, hey, we're not eh, we're not continuing. You guys are going to go to online learning. Um, but I, I know Dr Penn did it, like, the same day, I think. And then Drexel was a little bit after. But they were only after because they were on spring break. Um, so it's definitely been weird trying to transition from the learning, uh, after that point, once we went home, uh, I definitely think my grades, it's, it's been weird oh, as a, as an engineering student, it's just been weird because it's not, I'm not trying to take shots at any other majors, but like, I know for STEM major specifically, you need certain aspects to be in person. Like labs, right? Like labs. Yeah, exactly. labs. There are certain, there are certain like, uh, things that you just need to be there to like experience firsthand that you can't get on online and stuff like that. So like my gen eds were easy. I, I took like a law class that wasn't that bad, but like every, like my, my engineering class, I had to like work harder for my cow class was harder. My physics class was harder. Um, and I'm already not like motivated a lot, <laughs> So me having to like get up at 8 a.m. while I'm already in bed and try to stay awake during class was like rough. But uh, on a grand scale, uh, I know you probably didn't ask about the school, but like I went off on a tangent. That was my bad. Um, but like 
on a on a larger scale, it's definitely been like weird to not have a personal connection with people anymore. Like I'm a very yeah. I'm a very energetic person. I like to like be around people. So to be by myself and not be with my friends has definitely been weird. I now have to go put a mask on to go to Wawa, go into Wawa, and I can't go into Wawa if I don't have a mask, which is weird because I go to Wawa like twice a week. Uh, yeah, I got a problem with that. I got to fix that. Um, but it's uh, I don't know. It's provided some benefits. Uh, I got my I got to go back to work. Uh, because I I was only going to school like online, so I could still be at work while in class. Uh, wait, Tristan. Vincent yeah. asked, "What do you get? What do you get at Wawa?" <laughs> oh, what do I get at Wawa? Uh, I have a set order. I got um, I got a I go to the the counter. I get a Italian cheese hoagie. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and then I go to the drink aisle. I will get a quart of chocolate milk or half gallon. It's half gallon of chocolate milk. I'll get the uh, Airhead Extreme Bites. Those are the candies I get, and then I'll get I'll get the bag of uh, Tasty Cake Donuts, chocolate frosted. All right, I'm with it. That's good stuff. Yeah, I like I, I like that's like every time I go there, I I think I got a problem, but like, yeah. The the only thing that's like worrisome is the fact that I don't know. I take it I take it seriously. Like when I was not going out of the house, but like some people aren't. And that's like concerning because this is, this is a problem, but it definitely could be worse. It definitely could be a lot worse. And it does not promote faith in me that we as a city, a nation a people can survive if something more extreme were to happen. I feel like this was as weird as it is to say, I think this was kind of like a test for us because I think a lot of the infrastructure will have to change after this. We're not, we're not trying, I'm not trying to point fingers, but there are definitely weak spots in how we could have handled this and what we can do better going forward. Yeah. Even then, yeah, I still don't think we'd be prepared for another one. If another one hit, even after going through all this, I still don't think we'd be ready. How do you guys feel? Yeah, like, there's always, there's gonna be a shortage of, like, PPE. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, there's, I don't even think, I don't think they're gonna catch up to demand like for a while (laughs) for a while (laughs) but um going on to questions for Tristan um so you said like the social aspect is like a big part of your life and it's been really hard or not really hard it's just been like a little weird trying to transition um with this whole quarantine thing so like socially you have to adjust um and like I know for classes like college is a team sport (laughs) so um (laughs) so uh how have you been connecting with your classmates and your professors through all of this yeah so like another note on it being weird is like I'm also a freshman and that's freshman year is kind of like we can we gotta like make or break who we're who we're gonna hang out with who we're gonna try to make some friends and stuff like that so having like half the year cut off was definitely uh awkward but like I try to I try to I don't know when I'm it's different because when I'm at home I try to I stay to myself really and like I won't actually go and contact someone unless like I I need them or like I'm like hey like let me reach out see how they're doing um other than that I'll just stick stick to myself so it's like I don't know I feel like at home I'm more of an introvert which is I don't know hurting relationships because my friends are like oh like why aren't you talking to us and I'm like I'm sorry um but like I try to I try to try to reach out more i have like set groups of friends that i uh that i talk to and then besides that it's definitely definitely taking a hit on like the amount of people i've interact i interact with normally i say while i was on campus i would i don't know i talked to a lot of people and now it's a handful on the daily yeah i definitely understand that um so you commuted um and that's a little different than like living like on campus um, with like roommates and stuff. So did, was it that much of a difference? Like, I know you just tried to spend a lot of time on campus um, anyways, like, so it would like kind of bridge the gap from having to commute. Um, would you say that like commuting helped you prepare a little bit more for this or? 
Um, I definitely, uh, I think it did in a way because, um, well, besides the fact that everyone who lived on campus ended up getting kicked out, I didn't. I just kind of just went home like I always do every day. <laughs> um, they, the amount of time spent like doing stuff on campus was probably the same as everyone because of the fact that, yeah, I got there at, for an 8 a.m. class and I would hang around until like the 8 p.m., 9 p.m. train to go home. So like I was on campus all day. Um, just doing random stuff, but there is an aspect of living there that I never got. That's like an attachment that I didn't have. Like a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, kids who are in dorms or apartments, like they, they gain an attachment to like their roommates and their friends and their halls and stuff like that. And like they're, they get accustomed to living that life. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have that. So it was like just easier to like, just go home. Like I always do. Like I wasn't, I didn't really see any difference. Um, and the fact that I still live in Philly, which is uh, a lot of kids are coming from like outside of Philly. And again, I'm not trying to come at anyone, but like a lot of these kids are saying like, I don't like my town. Like my town is boring. Yeah. And I'm like, I stay the same. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're like they have to go home to somewhere where they think it's like worse. I'm just, I stayed at a constant. Yeah. So I think that was, that was an easier transition for me. Have you gone back into the city? since uh, all of this I, so i and uh, i don't go into the city city i have my work is past the airport if you're going south on 95 yeah. so i i go past there like i drive by it but it's not like i'm going in there like it's in the like you don't go down broad no 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 i haven't done that uh since no okay so if like have you noticed that there are less cars on the road or like less people on septa oh definitely def i haven't been on septa uh, personally, even though I took it when I was in, in school, but, uh, definitely the traffic's way lower. Uh, I've seen the videos, like a lot of people have of like a, a drone cam, like surrounding okay. city hall or whatever it was. And the streets just look empty. I've, I've found that shocking because if you ever try to drive around city hall, it is mayhem. Yeah. It is not a fun experience on a normal day, but, um, yeah, I've definitely seen those. I was I was really surprised that all of that um, happened to Philly because like usually Philly's like really pop in like <laughs> like yeah, everybody's like doing something. Um, but yeah, this this uh, whole situation has been uh, it's been really hard on the city. Um, have you noticed any like personal issues? Like, um, have your parents kept working? Um, like has this done anything to you like financially that has been a burden? Uh, not, not particularly. My dad, uh, my dad works for SEPTA. He, uh, he's still working. So, and my mom's a teacher at a high school. So she's now transitioned to online learning too. And then I've also started working. So there's not been like a financial decrease, which I'm grateful for because a lot of, yeah. a lot of people don't have that same opportunity uh, as me. So I definitely count my blessings there, but, uh, personally, no, I haven't had any financial, uh, difference. Okay. How do your parents feel about this? Are they going crazy or like, um, I don't think, I mean, at first it was just like everybody else. It was just like, what is this? What is happening? How are we going to do this? But since like we've since acclimated like everybody else, it's, uh, they're not, I know a lot of different parents are like super strict about like going out and stuff. My parents, obviously don't want me going like to parties and stuff, but I'm like, Hey, like I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and they're like, cool with it. It's not like they're super paranoid besides me and my dad end up going to work every day, even though we have like the proper precautions, like the mask, the gloves, like everything like that. We're distancing. We still go out of the house and go into work and stuff like that. How were the government restrictions in PA versus like, cause I know in Virginia, like we're allowed to go out to like exercise. Uh -huh. yeah. we, we can drive for recreation get um, food get food whatever um is that the same in um pa because i know in jersey there's like the what's it called the curfew <laughs> that everybody has to abide by how is it like how are the governmental restrictions so personally i haven't really seen anything i mean i don't go out a lot but like i haven't like obviously there's the like regulation of like parks you can't go to like parks you can't sit down in like stores and they're just like abiding by the the regulations that the government set up um, and Mayor Kenny set, made that rule. Um, but as far as like curfew, I haven't seen, I don't go down to like the city, so I'm not, uh, too familiar, but out in the suburbs where I live, 
Uh, I don't really see, I was like walking around the neighborhood super late last night because I just needed air um, and nothing really happened to me. But like I was, I, uh, where I work is right around uh, Delaware, the Delaware, Philly, like Pennsylvania little border there. And I know a lot of guys from my work are saying like, you can't go into Delaware anymore to buy stuff and come and bring it back. Because you need to, they you need to have like a Delaware ID, which I thought was I thought was weird. Like to them in New Jersey are like cracking down. You can't cross the borders with like Delaware products or New Jersey products, stuff like that. Yeah, that's that interesting. That's crazy because like we have the same thing in like from Maryland going to Virginia. Mm-hmm. So like my family was gonna come over because it's like Mother's Day, just to like yeah. say hi. But like apparently uh, Maryland just passed this regulation that like you could be go to jail up to one year or something Ooh. yeah like they're they're really going down hard on it um and i was really surprised because i like how do you enforce that like like do they just look at plates or uh yeah, do they like pull you over stop for your id or something but yeah like the government has been, i mean i'm glad the government has been cracking down on it but like it's 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 really different because like um my family chose to live in virginia like because it was so close to maryland and we can't really see our family anymore, which is kind of, it's kind of sad, but yeah, it's really different for us too. So we were talking about earlier how like the transition was not only for us, like it's for our parents too. Um, so I know you have siblings that have been long past college. Um, how, like, did they come back home or was it just you? So my, uh, my two older sisters are actually, uh, well, my, let's start with my, like my older sister. She went to Kutztown for undergrad in uh computer science and then was at her was in her master's year this year so she was a fifth year master's student and she ended up we just moved her last week moved all her furniture back she came back but didn't move out of her apartment yet um so she came back home and then we ended up moving all of her stuff back to the house my other my other older sister she graduated in december um uh, from Penn State Abington and she's been living living at home since then uh, she graduated undergrad in some science I don't know but she's so she was working after that um, until she got into nursing nursing school which she just got into um, so she would have been going into nursing school had this not happened I don't know when she's going now but um, yeah both of them are at home uh, my younger brother, who's still in high school, is at home, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's definitely a packed house now. Yeah. Um. So for us, at least, uh, or for me, um, my parents never saw me or my sister. <laughs> like we were just chilling, like like in our own spaces. Like they made sure that we had our own space to work. Um, they didn't want to impede on our personal space or whatever. Um, and then like, they just expected us to like do some chores, like after dinner or like on the weekends when we have time. Um, is that the same for you or did you have like a higher or lower expectation around the house? Uh, my, my stuff kind of just stayed the same, uh, cause I did live at home already. So I just kind of had the same, me and my brother had the same chore load, load, chore load. I can't talk. Um, and my sisters, I I don't know. My sisters don't really have to do anything, which I think is kind of whack, but whatever. Um, Stuff I got to do still is just, like, take out the trash. Um, what else? Like, today I was fixing up small things on my mom's car for Mother's Day. Like, changing yeah. her headlights, changing the windshield wipers, easy stuff. Um, yeah. uh, it's winter, so I still don't cut the lawn when it's summertime. I do that. Just just small things here and there. It's not, like, super big. My parents uh, are super cool about me being in school, and they're like, we don't want to, like, burden you with like yeah. the entire house chores when you have to do like school stuff and stuff like that. So they're definitely cool about that. But now that it's over, are you getting more of a, a push from your parents? Probably. I mean, I'm in, I'm doing work now. So I kind of, I kind of get out easy on that. Cause I have a, I have a weird schedule. I go in at, I, my shift starts at 5 30 AM goes to 1 30 PM. So I need to be down there like super early, wake up super early and I won't get home for a while and then I need to be in bed by eight for the next day so like I have a very limited amount of time where I have like free time but like when I when I do I do what I can um but yeah I kind of I kind of get some loopholes here and there yeah um so 
trying to like focus more on like your whole family dynamic mm-hmm. um did like going out for groceries change like do you guys go out less often and buy more or like have you guys found it difficult to find certain things that you would normally get so i i went to uh walmart this weekend actually uh or yesterday it was yesterday and i haven't gone i didn't want to go out of the house go food shopping because i thought that was like i've seen the the videos online and stuff like that it just seemed too much for me so i actually went for the first time yesterday since this started i used to go every weekend with my mom but uh my brother didn't want to go yesterday so i just hopped in his place um now we all wear masks going through the store it's weird staying like six feet apart because like a lot of the aisles are like not really packed yeah that. so like it's weird but uh we still go every week because we do have six people living at home now and we're not like kids either where we're eating like a little bit like me and my brother are still like yeah eating you a just, lot. <laughs> yeah you guys are still growing <laughs> we uh we go through like five gallons of milk a week Jesus. we go Holy through we go we go through, I think I, I calculated it at like eight pounds of cereal a week, something like that. Um, yeah, we eat a lot. So we go, we do go every week. We're uh, fortunate enough to be able to have like stores that are open and stocked enough to give us what we need. Cause I know a lot of stores are having like shortages. I have seen recently, um, I like cooking meat a lot, like in the oven, grilling, skillet doesn't matter i like cooking all sorts of meats and experimenting with flavors and stuff like that but there's been like a meat shortage so i haven't been getting access to like uh like chicken's been running out beef's been running out uh i recently just bought lamb because lamb was the like only thing on the shelf um so i've just been trying to get my hands on what i can what i can get there's definitely been shortages in like the cleaning supplies luckily we've been stockpiling stuff like before just because my parents are weird so like we've we had stuff already enough to where we could last it's not like a crazy amount like you see like shelves and shelves in people's houses but like it's like a few bottles or something like that and it'll get us through but luckily we're like fortunate enough to have that already we were doing the same thing uh even before then like we would only go uh out to get um groceries like once a month or something oh wow you really stock stock up then yeah so like we we didn't really have to change anything it's just like the availability of the availability of things like when we did go out was like different so we would have to like pick and choose um our times like obviously we wouldn't go like on the first of the month because that's when like the people that really need it have to get their stuff um but like it's like whenever my dad gecs home from work so how his work works (laughs) works <laughs> is like um they have like different um uh, like days or weeks so he would go in every other week because he's a part of like the gold team or whatever mm-hmm. and um other Got people would nice go in to it gold team yeah like <laughs> that's uh that's that's my dad's uh workflow and he whenever he would come home he would just stop by costco on the way and costco is really different too because you have to like stand outside you have to have a mask um, yeah yeah there, you have you to. have lines when you go yeah there's always lines like you can't you can't they like monitor how many people go in at a, uh at a time and they have like yeah. that little counter thing um but yeah uh how are you working out how are you staying fit Oof, that one definitely i think that one is the biggest thing that's <laughs> taken a hit i heard the term quarantine 15 yesterday i went if that's not the truth i uh i don't know i i didn't really i'm not gonna lie and say like i worked out before I used to work out a lot in high school, but uh, ever since coming to college, like, the schedule's been been off, and uh, I've been trying to get back into it, but it's just, like, a motivation thing. Um, but I definitely should. I have the availability. I have, like, weights and stuff at my house, yeah. so I could. Like, my siblings, my parents, they work out, but I don't. Uh, I prefer to sleep and watch Netflix because I'm lazy. But uh, I've definitely been uh, – I, I don't know. I definitely should be doing more. The only thing I'm doing now is like I run a little bit every now and again. I try to keep my mile pace down because I know if I go too long without it, then it'll just spike up and I don't want that. I think the last time I did it, it was like seven, seven minutes, which is far from where I've been, but it's definitely not as bad as I can be. Yeah, like I, like if I didn't get injured, I'd be running marathons by now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see you. I see you on your on your stories po- posting your like your Nike run app. I'm like, this man is crazy, bro. I I ran a ten miler one day just because like I felt like. 
<laughs> yeah, that's definitely not me. Cause I get I get uh those I I don't run for distance, so I'll get those uh those shin splints. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. And I mean, you can overcome it by just like doing it more, but I just don't. Cause it's I, not I, even I, like you you're doing it right. Cause like you don't run often, so you you're supposed to run for time first, and then focus mm-hmm. on dif- uh distance. Um, but yeah, I got like a foot injury, so now I have to wait like another week, and then I can start running again. But I've been biking, and that's that's been cool because I haven't I haven't touched my bike since like eighth grade, <laughs> so it was weird. Um, but yeah, like running helped a lot. Um, with just like getting out of the house and like yeah, distracting me, yeah, because like it is true, like being in the house with like all, your whole family again, it's way different than like before. Um, especially for me, since I was like, I've been out of the house for two years yeah, <laughs> yeah already. So it's been, um, kind of a big change. Um, but you know, like we're getting through it. Um, talking about, uh, sorry, talking about running and looking at your shirt reminds me of the, the sports that aren't happening oh and me going crazy with this. I, I got a, a notification from ESPN app about cornhole, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you these weird sports coming up. I love it. I love it. I thought I loved all the sports before. Now I'm getting, I know. like, there was a whole event last, was it last Saturday? Well, yeah, it was when I was moving my sister. I came home and it was, uh, ah, uh, what's his name? Bjornsson. Bjornsson was deadlifting. Oh, was yeah, the, the mountain. That was what was on TV. Yeah, like, and then last night, the UFC just opened up. That was it. Those were good fights. Those were really good fights. 20 seconds, bro. <laughs> Dude, that, that cowboy, what was it, cowboy Pettis fight? man that was like i didn't watch it but like like because i didn't even know it was on like i can't believe justin gaethje beat uh tony ferguson yeah that was crazy bro i wasn't expecting that now he completely shifts up who khabib's gonna fight yeah i know i saw like on um espn or sports center or whatever like um khabib just like swimming like like, oh in the river yeah that guy's crazy he's he's, is i think he's honestly in my opinion one of the best in that division of all time that man is yeah. an animal he's insane um i don't know like do you watch joe rogan podcast I, I i love joe rogan i listen to joe rogan every day when i can like i'll try to I'll binge hit because i won't listen to it every day but i'll binge all of his episodes at once yeah so they were talking about like i don't even remember who he was talking to but he was talking to like a fighter about how like they don't even try when they when they like train you know what i mean and then they do it like they like ramp up. Yeah, and like the eight week fight camp or whatever. Yeah, like they only work hard like when it's like close to. Um, yeah, close to fight time. Yeah, that's insane to me because like for swimming at least, like we would work hard until the week of, and that's our like what did we used to call it? Um, I don't even remember, but like that's our like drag week where we would like oh. go really slow. And like we would chill, like just to save, keep our muscles moving. Save your moving. energy, stuff like that. Don't get yeah. injured. Yeah, like we were chilling in that week leading up to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I miss sports. I miss, I miss all sports. I never thought like there's some some things I'm just watching now where I'm I'm get I love the memes that are coming out where it's I go what was it I went to the zoo to boo the lions because there's no sports. <laughs> like I'm just I'm trying to get anything I bro. Are zoos even food. open? Like. <laughs> I don't think so, but it was just for the joke. But like, I'm, yeah. ah, I'm missing everything. Everything shut down. You can. What do you think there's... about the the NBA? Uh, playing in front of no fans in like a month. Um, so I don't even know if they can do that because like, if um, if they open, like Golden State and I think uh, Dallas said they weren't going to open their training facilities. Ah. So like, if even if the NBA does um like allow people to open up the training facilities like some people can just elect to not do it yeah well it's definitely a weird spot even if they elect to continue the season because of the fact that they were already through three-fourths of the season yeah so it's not like it's going to be weird if you say all right we're going to throw away the season but it's also weird if you continue because now like i'm a i'm a sixers fan philly philly guy so uh we were very battered and injured going into the quarantine now we're coming out at full strength because we had. I mean, it could be full strength if they kept training at the level that they they were. Yeah, but so like, you could have the rust too. You could, but the entire NBA, you're going to go into the playoffs with every player on a 
two three month rest yeah i don't know i i i only want the season to continue because i want uh i'm a i'm a lebron fan i need that man to play because he's not getting any younger he needs if he wants a shot at take taking a shot at the jordan legacy he's got to win this year yeah i know but it might be taken away from him. But, like, from a person who was on – who supports a team that was on, like, the fringe, like, Wizards were ninth seed <laughs> um, by the time they were coming up. I want the season to continue, but, like – Give them a chance. Well, they were coming up with a Beal lead in the team. I know, because they snubbed him from all-star contention. So yeah, He was averaging, what, 50, 50 30, was, 40, something like, like that? Like, after the all-star break, he just popped off. He said – I'm never getting left off an all-star roster. I, I don't know. I honestly think Beal was the star of that team. I know you guys like putting your stock in John Wall, the Golden Boy. We don't have a choice. We pay him too much. You guys chose to pay him that much. You didn't have to give him that second contract. Our, our GM sucks. <laughs> oh, no. Once I, he gave Porter, once he gave Otto Porter that max deal. Oof, that Porter deal. Ooh, <laughs> had to let him go, bro. I don't know. That, uh, even if you, I don't know, it sucks to say, but even if y'all caught that eight seed, you're still going against Milwaukee in the first round. Like, I mean, just to keep up our legacy, man, we, we, have, we missed the playoffs, like, last year because Wall was out for the end of the season. Yeah. So, like, what if we would have made it. clean up he had? <sighs> He had he, knee surgery I'm pretty time. sure he like tore his he got like a bone spur off of his heel oh. but then like he slipped and re-injured it so oh, <laughs> yeah so he would have been back like before the season ended but we just got messed up by his stupidity <laughs> but I mean he's been saying like he's gonna come back better than he was before so that's all we can hope for yeah I mean to take a tangent on sports I just figured that was a big big part of uh it is a big part bro i'm <laughs> xfl might not even come back oh that's done it's done it, no no i mean like next year oh no i'm saying i'm capping it i'm i don't think they're gonna come back i feel bad though because like well the nfl's poaching their players too what do you mean the nfl are taking the are signing xfl players to deals like the uh the quarterback of uh what was it the raiders or something like that the xfl something like that the Dude who was, like, friends with Andrew Luck. He got signed to a team. There was that, te- uh, the guy from, like, who played for, like, Houston or, like, a Texas team. Yeah, something like that. Well, he, he played for Temple. He was QB's. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking yeah. about. He got signed to the Raiders? No, 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 sorry. I don't know what the, the team was in the XFL, but it was, like, the red team. They were, like, top of the league, but he just got signed to a team in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, that's great for them, but, like, I feel bad for the rest of the league. Oh, that dude... He was, like, all over ESPN where, like, he chose not to continue with college and go to the XFL. And then, like, he was popping up. Like, I don't even remember what his name was. Um, I'm not even going to try. He was, like, a linebacker or something. This is why why your show needs a Jamie from uh, Joe Rogan. You need a Jamie to pull stuff up. I know. <laughs> we don't have that in the budget, Tristan. We don't have the budget yet? Uh, you'll blow up soon eventually have you listened to our other our other stuff i haven't i gotta i gotta check it out i've been uh listening to joe recently good <laughs> there's there's a there's only three episodes all right i'll check i'll check them out after this it's on spotify we're chilling um let me see what other questions we got in here um have you been doing anything else to pass the time? Have you been gaming? Well, I know you're not a big game person. Yeah, I don't I don't play video games like at all. Like I know you've been working and exercising. Like has there been anything else? Um I've been going on uh well I have I ever told you about my trivia? Trivia Tristan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh I've been I've been trying to brush up on that because my dad um I guess for the viewers that don't know, my uh my dad was on Jeopardy when I was uh, fourth grade. So he's always been really, really big into trivia. And drop the that. name, drop the name. T- uh, Tom Jennings, don't don't be confused with Ken. Ken I was about to say, that is Ken not your dad. <laughs> uh, world record holder, 72 game winner. Uh, it's not him, not him. He won, he won in uh, 2011. Uh, so yeah, I've, he just had a big impact on me in trivia. I love trivia. So now he's been getting back into it. Uh, so now I have to, just so you I play- can. Do you play HQ? I did for like a week, but I got bored of it. Just like, uh, what was the other one? Trivia Crack? Yeah. I ended up playing that in middle school, and my friends didn't like me because I would win. But that was like the only thing I was good at, so like I took it. But then I get bored at these games. 
But I feel like, like, have you ever won HQ? I don't think I have just because of the obscurity of the questions in HQ. Yeah. Like, I have a very set knowledge when it comes to trivia. Like, it's Jeopardy trivia. Like, capitals of states, capitals of countries, best Oscar winners. Like, it's things no one knows about. Like, not pop culture yeah. as much. Like, who was, who was this person's husband in this year or something like that like i don't know that yeah i mean if you have the time you should probably like check it out i mean it's been i've been playing it for the past like couple weeks and it was they're still they're still going yeah has the prize money gone up uh it's consistently around 5k have you won alan no i got to the 11th question like a week ago (laughs) and then i got Uh knocked out of the 12th question i cried it was so sad (laughs) (laughs) that sticks it was a sad day. Um, but and yeah, outside of outside of trivia, I've been going on like Netflix, seeing yeah. what movies are there. I'm a big uh, rom com guy, so I've been checking out checking out different movies on there. I've just watched the half of it. I can't recommend that movie enough. That movie is fantastic. It just came out on Netflix. So the Mindy Kaling one, right? No, no, no. This one is um, this one is good. This one is like people I'd never seen before. They're like a new, I guess they're like promoting them or whatever. It's called the half of it. It's like, it came up in the trailers uh, when you first open Netflix. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing my binging too. Uh, I've been watching, you know, the TV show Frasier. It's like an old TV show. You watch Frasier? Bro, Frasier's so good. <laughs> oh, Frasier is so good. You're really so good. throwing it back, dude. I'm old. I'm about Ooh, to watch man. Cheers, bro. <laughs> wow. It's like, Epic. I'm into the old stuff. You're not the stereotypical college kid watching Friends, Office, Parks and Rec. Uh, I, I mean, I watch. I went through those. Um, I like How I Met Your Mother. Oh, love that. Love that. I was disappointed, but love that. It was a great show when it lasted or when they figured out the plot line. Um, <laughs> but yeah, also movies. Like, I watched the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. In order? No, nah, I order? jumped around. Uh, I watched- so I actually did that before watching Infinity War. Me and my boys watched all of it in order. And then there you over, go, yeah. over winter break, when Disney Plus first came out, I watched all of the Star Wars in oh yeah their, in their order not oh, not the, that's smart not when they came out but yeah. i i'm a, I'm a big young anakin fan that's what i can say out of watching it did you watch the rise of skywalker again i didn't it just came out i have to yeah. do that i watched you that. haven't it watched sick. it yeah, i haven't dude. yet i got up to eight i didn't get not i didn't watch nine yet it is very good worth it yeah totally it's very end game like, but you know, it's whatever. Ooh. Does it does it wrap up the series? Or are there gonna be after after movies? Um, oh my god. It wraps it ending... up pretty well. Nah, the ending's not satisfying at all. What are you talking about, Alan? I thought it was fine. No, no, not at all. I mean I guess, but you know, to each their own. Um, <laughs> I was satisfied. Yeah, uh Vincent, how, do you have anything else to ask Tristan? What's your uh, future outlook? How do you think <laughs> it'll all come to a head? Okay, yeah, yeah, I can, I can answer. That. Um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big optimist. I like thinking of things glass half full. So obviously, I'm also like a realist. I'm not gonna say. I know that's kind of like oxymoron, like to say I'm a realist and an optimist. But like, I don't know. Um, optimistically, I hope for the best. But like, you have to think a cure isn't gonna come like anytime soon. We all have to keep this social distancing. Um, listen to our health professionals, the people who actually know what they're talking about, make sure we're not just making random claims and stuff that isn't supported by science, um, just to keep everybody safe out here. Optimistically, I've heard estimates that it, um, I don't know, I've heard up estimates all the time, like it could go, it could end in the summer, the social distancing laws, stuff like that. Um, but some say like, we're going to have next semester online too. So like, I don't know what to think. I'm hopeful that uh, something can come up soon because everyone obviously wants to go back to normal life. But uh, honestly, I don't think things will ever go really back to normal because even if they say, all right, you're allowed out of your houses, are people going to go to like concerts, crowded concerts now? I don't think they will, at least not to the effect that they were before. Yeah, that was, like, the the Disney World thing that my dad and I were talking about, like, a few days ago. That's, like, if Disney World ends up opening, like, should still. they expect a bunch of people still to go? Or 
like like i said no but like yeah, yeah. Pe people be stupid you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah there are, you see all these stories and i'm not trying to make this uh a rant or anything but there are definitely people out there who aren't aren't following the ordinances and it's just making it hard for the rest of us like we all want to get out at some point but like some of us are following what our health professionals are saying and we're trying but uh i don't know i i have i have some outlooks on the human race that uh <laughs> would uh probably not be for this discussion but uh yeah I'm, I'm hopeful i'm hopeful for the best hopefully we can go back to somewhat normality soon enough um i miss my friends i miss like hanging out going to food places sitting down and eating food i can't do that anymore um i want to go back on dates Ooh. <laughs> yeah man can't do that have you ever had a zoom date it's very awkward have you <laughs> yeah some people man. got married over zoom there's the a grind zoom wedding. has not stopped for this man never <laughs> never amazing tinder oh, hinge man. bumble best friends now oh my god <laughs> you meet your daily limits <laughs> every I, single I, day <laughs> we don't gotta talk about that here <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So, um, do you think, so just a personal opinion, like I know this ties in a little bit. Um, do you think our semester is going to be online next year? I sure hope not. I, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially as engineering majors. Oh, I, I hope not. I sure hope not. I don't, I don't know what you got coming up, but next, the spring semester I got coming or the fall, fall 20, I got statics. Mm, yep. Have fun with that one. Online, yep. And every every engineering major knows statics and dynamics. I take dynamics in the spring, but those are like some of the hardest classes you can take. I need to be yep. on my grind, focused in there. And if I'm at home sleeping during class, it's not gonna work. Hey, good luck to you, man. I feel that, bro. <laughs> Although, like, I've had it pretty easy. Um, uh, how's business? Yeah, how's business online? Is it easier, harder? I'm chilling. I mean, like. It's not, not like a hands-on major. Like <laughs> you can read everything. You you don't really have to like be in class to to like understand it. And like especially my professors, my professors did not even care, bro. <laughs> one of my professors <laughs> said, one of my professors says, "Deuces, I'm not gonna teach you guys anymore. I'm just gonna po post my class captures, um, and I'll see you guys at the final." And I mean, I was fine. Like I did pretty well, uh, all things considered. Um, but like. I'm right now, uh, I'm taking summer, or I'm going to take summer classes, like starting tomorrow, just to keep myself on track, because especially if internships don't happen, yeah, then, like, I want to be doing something like I don't want to just be sitting around during this. Yeah. Thank God for credit, no credit. I'll say that. Did you use that option? Yeah. Well, I used it. I used half of it because I knew I was getting, I was getting uh, good grades in like my, my law gen ed and my intro to engineering class. So I took that, got what I wanted, and that way I had some quality points going towards my GPA. And then the classes where I was like struggling a little bit, I just took the credit, no credit option. So it ended up bumping my GPA up from last semester, which was a transitional semester, I'll call it. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. The the having too much fun <laughs> GPA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll call it that. We'll call it the the social the social the social semester. Yeah, but I mean that's good that you had that. Like I mean, yeah. everyone goes through it. Yeah, I got to I got to know what I what my limits are. I got to know what I should and shouldn't be doing, stuff like that. Some something that I should have I should learn in the first semester, not in like my fourth. Yeah. yeah, like you you did fine, just like from what I noticed, Mr. Tristan. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, but uh, it was a great time having you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks thank you so much up. for your input. I, I will definitely check out your other episodes. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do you have anything to add? Closing statements? Plug your IG, anything you want. Yeah, I guess I'll plug my IG because I'm, I'm a man for the clout. Um, follow me on Instagram at tjennings316. Uh, once this quarantine's over, I'll start posting more modeling pics. I'll have my boy, my boy AJ taking pictures for me. Well, yes, best sir. photographer around. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, unquestionable. Yes, sir. Yes, all I can say going forward is everyone be safe. Do good habits. Wash your hands. Stay at home. 
listen to health professionals and we'll all get through this. No one panic. We got this. Sick. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you guys for having me. Cool, man. Thanks. Thank you for listening. Uh, This has been Lifeline with AJ and Vincent. I'm AJ. I'm Vincent. And yeah, thank you for listening. We hope you'll tune in next time. See ya. Peace.